Our gardens are teeming with life. Beautiful life. And it's not just the plants that's in the garden or the soil, which is alive, of course, with microorganisms. It's also all the other creatures that visit and live in our gardens. Our wild birds that come and bring the beautiful song, their animation. And of course, it's the little amphibians, the frogs and the toads and the newts. And it's the little mammals that visit too, our little hedgehogs. But of course, in addition to that, we've also got so many different insects. Our gardens are teeming with life. The problem is, of course, we're becoming so very domesticated in our gardens. Perfect fence lines, immaculate lawns. There's no wild areas or scrabby sections behind the shed or the garage. It's all pristine and clean. But we need that rustic nature in our gardens. We need to be able to encourage these insects and these wildlife into the gardens to help create the balance. Aphids, otherwise known as green fly, but of course as black fly, are those quite fleshy little bugs that eat lots of different types of plants. They're on your vegetable plants, they're on your roses, you know, and on shrubs as well. Usually quite soft foliaged uh, uh, plants that they're on because they're sort of like sucking, biting and sucking insects. So if you've got a lot of green fly, Nothing helps you more than some of the birds that may pick it off and of course the very important little ladybirds that will eat 5,000 green fly in their life of one year. So getting that balance right and creating small habitats to help these creatures help you garden is really important. And you know, it doesn't cost a fortune. In fact, many of the things that you use to create these habitats, you can collect on a woodland walk. Things like lace wings, little creatures with swept back wings, their larva will eat loads of little aphids. And of course, ladybirds too, they're great aphid eaters. There are so many different beneficial ones and all you really need to do is to give habitats to enable them to live. And it doesn't cost a fortune. A singular pipe like this, and you stuff inside it maybe a little bit of straw. You know, this is from the pampas grass at the front of the house. Just put a few bits of that in there as well. And it starts to create a little habitat. It's all things that offer something that's dry and something that's warm and something that's safe. Of course, you can always get bits of cardboard, corrugated cardboard, and just roll them up because that makes a small haven. And you can either put them inside the pipe with loads of others and start to create this little dry shaped space area that's ideal for little insects to go and take a bit of a rest. You can go even further, of course, and create a whole box of them. This has been one that's been in my garden for a long time. As you can see, there's remnants here of uh, the pampas grass. There's rolled up bits of cardboard. This is really key as well. It's bamboo canes that I've taken the drill and I've drilled out the pith there. I've also drilled out some holes in logs as well, which is perfect for solitary bees. Little masonry bees that visit, they lay their eggs in there. But it's a perfect area with loads of different sized nooks and crannies and crevices where little beneficial insects can go and rest and take it easy. And it's that type of not untidy, but practical areas that make a, a real difference inside the garden. I mean, you could just do it with an old house brick. Just by taking a house brick and shoving some of this little dry leaves and straw and into the holes, make very cosy little spaces for insects to go into. And it really works. I mean, it's almost like the Ritz for insects. It's a cosy place for them to stay. And of course, pine cones that you will collect in woodland walks are ideal. You can either uh, uh, hang them from trees or you can glue a lot of smaller ones together. It's better if the pine cone is open, of course, and it makes a nice little safe environment for insects, especially like ladybirds, to go in and rest. Now, double check with the glue, of course, that it's not toxic, but there's many types of glue and silicates that are around that aren't, that will bind these little cones together to create a perfect little habitat for ladybirds. Or even if you don't want to do that, the areas that you've got underneath some of the hedging, around the back of the garage, between the fence and the extension, areas that you don't normally see, you can add in dry leaves, 
mixed up with logs, pine cones, and a whole host of other small sections that enable you to create a little wild woodland area at the back, which is ideal for visiting creatures. Of course, hedgehogs are pretty good too. You can, in fact, create your own hedgehog habitats. What I normally do is whip down to the, uh, to the wine merchants. They give me a few of these free crates. I then attach onto the end a little tunnel. You can either make that out of wood or, of course, you can use empty um, a downpipe. All it needs to be is about five inches wide. I usually put a little entrance tunnel in to stop the fox's snouts from being able to get in there so the hedgehog can go through its tunnel and be completely safe underneath. And then position that under your hedge or around in other areas that's quite protected. Here's one that I've done earlier where I've actually attached, instead of using a pipe, I mean, I've used a, a little bit of wood here. It needs to be uh, 13 centimetres or five inches. You could use a bit of downpipe if you wished. And all of a sudden that becomes a marvellous hedgehog house. What I normally do is once I position that underneath the hedge, I put a little bit of bedding for them, like leaves and straw, uh, just around the outside. Don't put it in yourself. They like to do their own interior design. And of course, if you've left it outside and it's disappearing, you know where it's going and you know you've got hedgehogs. Having an array of little birdhouses in the garden is very essential. You can buy birdhouses with different size entrance holes. Of course, they attract different sizes of birds. And a big open face one like here, which is perfect for robins. You can buy them relatively inexpensively online or from garden centres. You can paint them up if you wish. But adding bird boxes in will bring the birds to your garden. Now, the one thing to remember about any uh, positioning of habitats, whether it's a hedgehog box or a bird box, is make sure they're not facing a north or northeast where they get a lot of cold winds through. You want them to be quite protected. And with a lot of bird boxes, uh, you want them up and out the way of predators, you know? You want them positioned away so cats don't get them. And with hedgehogs as well, position them in good locations safe locations and of course comfortable locations make a big difference now another little treat is a little amphibian house invariably there's a hole at the bottom so obviously the moist ground the frogs can get onto too you can put a little bit of bedding in there to make sure that they're quite comfortable obviously they don't like it as dry as most but hibernating makes perfect sense you can also bury a pot in sideways into the ground if you wish to make your own and again put in some straw and leaves it works well uh, another habitat is the butterfly house. Here's one that I bought, but they're really easy to make yourself. In fact, if you go onto my website, there's loads of details now. You can make little insect houses. Uh, as you can see, there's little slats that they go through. There, there is a little landing pad there because butterflies, they need to absorb quite a bit of heat to help them fly and move. So when you think they're sunbathing and their wings are opening and closing uh, and they're taking it easy, they're not. They're recharging themselves to fly. And of course, the beautiful colors, it's called cryptic coloration, on their on their wings make uh, you know one of my favorite insects that visit the the, uh, the garden apart from bees of course which is i'm a beekeeper so i'm bound to say that now another little habitat is in fact the little bumblebee house look at that it's perfect that's been, it's been in my garden for a while it's seen a few families this little one so there's lots of different things that you can buy to make houses in your garden that's perfect for the creatures that are visiting Another one, of course, that you can add into your garden is bat boxes. They are really good. We love seeing the bats. Round about twilight, they come up, taking the insects and the like. So put them up really high. So as they've got this little run at the bottom and there's a small slat that they get into. So these are ideal for little bats visiting the gardens. So there you have it, loads of different habitats, little homes that you can have in your own garden to support the creatures that visit. We're sharing our gardens with more than just our families and our plants and the soil. So by encouraging these creatures into your gardens, hedgehogs, they eat slugs, ladybirds, they eat aphids, birds, they also protect and take some of the caterpillars from. In fact, a lot of these creatures, frogs and toads, they eat slugs as well. You, in fact, got your own garden bouncers. So set up some habitats for these bouncers and they'll help you Take care of your plants.